So in Kama Kodi, Managing Director and CEO with City Union Bank now joins us. Let's understand from him that, uh, well, the bank has appointed a new CRO, that is Chief Risk Officer. What is the thought behind this? How does this change? Some concerns which have been raised by the regulator in the past. And is this an indication from the bank that they are now going to be really uh, taking very cautious steps in terms of their credit profile going forward? Mr. Kama Kodi, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, appointment of a CRO, that is Chief Risk Officer. Is this largely after the Reserve Bank of India red flag? Is this an extension of perhaps what Reserve Bank of India wanted and you pretty much have followed their instructions? It is uh, uh, basically like uh, uh, we, we felt uh, and also uh, from uh, what we uh, learned from uh, Reserve Bank of India, like earlier we had our uh, Chief Risk Officer at the cadre of uh, uh, Deputy General Manager. Uh, the uh, it was uh, like they felt that uh, the uh, like they, the uh, level of general manager will be required for uh, uh, chief risk officer to have a, a total control and it is basically the relative positioning uh, within the organization and it is uh, the new CRO is also an uh, like a uh, internal candidate who had been with us for quite uh, some time and also he had uh, experience as uh, uh, chief uh, risk officers in it is uh, uh, earlier uh, uh, employment and all and that's why it's an uh, basically, internal, uh, like say, some sort of uh, rearrangement. Uh, similarly, we have a few, uh, like say, superannuations uh, which are uh, expected in the, uh, uh, like say, next uh, uh, one year or so for which we have to go for, uh, uh, like say, rearrangement and, uh, uh, like say, uh, uh, the responsibilities have to be, uh, like say, uh, 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 given uh, for the next generation and things like that. So, this is basically uh, uh, the feeling is that, like say, earlier, uh, uh, it was sufficient uh, uh, for us to have an uh, chief risk officer at the level of uh, deputy general manager, and now it is getting repositioned as a general manager. That is the uh, thing behind it. Um, this, I hope you'll appreciate the spirit of my next question. Your reappointment, sir, uh, is also due. When do you expect an uh, endorsement coming on that from RBI? The uh, board has already sent the uh, recommendation and uh, normally my uh, actual date of completion of the current tenure is on uh, 30th uh, April. Uh, uh, if you look into the uh, earlier, uh, uh, like say, uh, almost uh, I had gone through three, four uh, uh, extensions in the past, we uh, usually get uh, like say maybe uh, one or two weeks before the end of the schedule. So probably we have uh, another uh, four to uh, five weeks to wait. So market should not be worried, right? You're reasonably confident that the extension will come through. Yes, that's the uh, hope, and we don't expect any major uh, uh, issue on. Despite the fact that the regulator a couple of months ago had raised concerns, you think that that is something which is not something which could appoint your reappointment? Yeah, this is not something which can be uh, spoken directly in the uh, uh, live telecast. But uh, what we have uh, we have gone through this. Uh, extension almost uh, like uh, three, four times in the past, and we hope uh, uh, like uh, uh, everything should be going soon. We are reasonably confident. Uh, when we spoke last, sir, we were talking about your quarterly numbers, and you, in a sense, your comment that, look, you would be taking a growth and risk, and you would be balancing it, and for the quarter gone by, the growth was below industry average. Your outlook also indicated that at your base, the rate will your growth rate will be lower than the industry average. Are you looking at revisiting that? Because when I look at banks which have a balance sheet like yours, they are committing to us a growth rate which is in late teens and even 20% plus, while you're talking about a number which is early teens. Uh, are you looking at revisiting your growth numbers which you shared with us after your quarterly numbers? Basically, uh, if you look into that, uh, this particular question, I have been uh, uh, hearing uh, for past uh, many years at uh, this uh, phase of the interest rate cycle, at least uh, four, four, four or five times in the past. So we have to take uh, multiple factors into account, and uh, the current growth rate uh, definitely, yes, uh, the uh, systemic growth rate is around uh, 16 percentage. We also thought, uh, when we were discussing about the uh, second quarter results, uh, uh, things should be firming up and we should be even working for uh, uh, 15 to 18 percentage growth rate for the current year. That was basically coming from the way, around the same time last year, say calendar year uh, 2022, the uh, capacity utilization was much lower, but the things were getting better from the uh, COVID lows and uh, the, uh, uh, the Ukraine war, oil price and inflation and all were there. But 
things started moving uh, in a good pace we expect that normally what we see uh, in the uh, line of activity where we are there when the capacity utilization crosses 80 percentage people will start talking about uh, going for further investment uh, uh, but uh, uh, actual investment to start when the capacity utilization crosses about 85 percentage we were expecting those numbers will be coming uh, towards the end of the current financial year and we were very confident but things some got somewhere got stuck at the pre covid level in fact even in the last policy statement the capacity utilization is still at 74.5 percentage almost exactly at the same point which were there during the pre covid level and uh, you are hearing multiple reports on how things were moving another uh, thing what we are uh, seeing is that uh, like many of our peers uh, uh, they have also aggressively done for portfolio buyouts for the uh, nbfc sector which is also contributing for the growth which we are right. not going we are going organically and we feel like particularly when also you have the uh, deposit growth rate of the system is lower than the uh, our credit growth rate you can't have credit growth rate at a sustainable level in the higher team hmm. and so uh, as we have told in the past uh, we will be balancing growth and risk and in fact in terms of the pnl profitability return ratio like roa and all our third hmm. quarter has been uh, one of the best quarters that we were able to absorb in the entire rbi uh, divergence in a single quarter and all so our priority will be in protecting the pnl and the balance sheet stability more than the accelerating growth the growth will automatically come maybe in the next uh, few months when things normalizes and we are not in a hurry we are uh, sure. uh, continuously watching the situation and depending upon the need we will be increasing it or uh, to, uh, uh, do required changes uh, uh, for the growth as we move forward sure uh, could you just leave us with uh, a number in terms of where you see your nims headed basically we had been like say uh, uh, expecting and uh, sharing like uh, the, our uh, nim range had been between 3.8 and 4.1 um, for the past 10 12 quarters and in the same range actually it expands when we get into the increasing interest rate scenario and when the liability side gets repriced it gets into the contract and more we are still seeing the uh, uh, margins and the uh, almost reaching the uh, like say uh, the band of uh, 3.8 to 4.1 as we had been trading in the Uh, uh, earlier uh, uh, con call uh, result con call district okay mr kamakodi great to have you on the show thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us today on et now okay. let's uh, move uh, sectors